Hey there, Angie M. I just filmed this look. You'll see it before you see this video, so it's it's okay. I wanted to, I just, I figured I'd do the face-to-face -face stuff first before I start doing the top-down stuff. I wanted to talk about the goals in 2021 for finance and for makeup, and I'm going to split those into two separate videos. So basically the financial goals are really to get control of the knee-jerk reaction spending. There are some things that I, I know ahead of time I'm going to spend money on because I just, there are things that to me personally, I, I like to spend my money on. But in terms of making room for abundance and making smarter choices, being able to look at the wish list, and I should have grabbed my planner and didn't like a thing back making room for the things that I do need to to get and realizing that can I move this back in no no this is that's as good as we're gonna get for zoomed out okay this is as good as we're gonna get for zoomed out you know making sure that there is room for all of the good stuff too and my husband is is up above doing something and dropping stuff and it's echoing but uh what I do is I keep a wish list. Now the stuff that's highlighted is stuff I either have decided I don't want, don't need, and whatnot. And I do have check marks next to things that I have I have picked up. And I do have some spending regrets from this year. But uh outside of that there are things that I, I am I am very happy with inviting into my life. And I see an IKEA thing on here that I'm gonna cross out because I have changed my mind on the shelving unit that I want. But to that end I went through and I actually made so I made a plan. I'm gonna pull out my planner here. That's not it. It's fitness schedule I'm trying to work on. All the stuff I'm trying to do. All right, so I went and I sat down and I didn't necessarily, like I haven't, I haven't figured out my space. This is this is the architect insert from cloth and paper. Well, it's in their pad, but I punch it and use it as an insert. But I went through and I took a look at what I wanted and wrote down the prices and then figured out I, I overtaxed. I taxed for a different state that has a higher tax than the state I live in so that I could kind of get a baseline for what I was looking at spending. And it's about $351 if I round up for all of the things that I want for the shelving unit that hopefully will work better in my space. I'm not running out to get it because I am thinking that between now and when I do get it that... I might change my mind on what I want. I might change my mind on the color. I might change my mind on the entire setup. Needs might change, other things might come up. So I am trying to remind myself that there is something very important for my space that I want. You don't see, but next to me over here, it's my husband's dartboard. I'm sure he would like to use it and can't use it in the space where it is. It's gotta move elsewhere. We have been looking for storage solutions, and I don't know, the IKEA order might end up being a massive order where I want to pay the $40 in shipping and just have everything brought right to my house without having to go and get it because I'm looking over at the other side of my basement where all of our storage is that we have been working on cleaning out. We're still working on cleaning out. That needs to be organized, and we need shelving units to actually put the boxes on so they're easy to find, easy to reach, access, all that good stuff, and not just in piles where we have to move things to get to other things. And Ikea actually has shelves that I think will work with that. So I, I just, we have to figure some stuff out. We gotta figure out some space. And a part of that and a part of opening up for abundance is not just spending because you're afraid if I don't get something right now, I'm never going to get it, but making room for that abundance in 2021. And when I say that, I also, I just want to make sure that, you know, that I'm checking in myself and I'm checking in with myself and I'm not buying replacements or duplicates or things like that. And a part of that process as well is going to be to go in and, you know, take stock of what inserts I have. What am I throwing away? What am I decluttering? Am I decluttering stuff that I didn't use? Well, why did I buy that? And being more cognizant of not just wanting to try stuff to try stuff, but actually looking at things that I might be interested in actually continuing to use because, you know, being smart. Being smart is a good thing. Okay. I mean, that is the big thing. Like on my notes here, the, the big thing that I have is just not shopping or buying from a place of lack, not acting like, again, you know, there's a lot of FOMO and a lot of marketing is directly tied into making you think you're going to miss out if you don't spend money. And I think that 
We gotta take a step back and actually look at what are we spending our money on and not buying into the FOMO because if we miss out on something, there's always gonna be something else. There's always going to be another thing, 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 and we can't have all of the things. Even if I had infinite money, was playing The Sims, had, had you know, ka -ching, infinite money. Yes, I do use that, I cheat at Sims, all right? I admit it. I cheat at Sims and I enjoy it. But if I had that in real life, I wouldn't just constantly buy everything I wanted because I would burn out and get really bored with doing that. So don't do that. 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 And that, that's the best I can say about the financials. We're going to talk about it more. I, I have to figure out how I want to log things. And I'm almost thinking as I flip to my the financial section of my planner here, yes, talking a little bit about, you know, savings for the big ticket items that I want instead of just spending, 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 but maybe actually separating out what <sighs> separating out where I keep like the the bill stuff that I'm tracking for specific reasons and logging it separate of just the regular purchases so that maybe we can sit down and talk about the regular purchases I I don't know how comfortable I am with that either because I do feel like <sighs> everybody has different incomes and sources of revenue and different credit limits and things like that. So I, I know that what some people think is frivolous spending, other people might not find frivolous. So I feel like marking down things that I think is frivolous spending and then trying to talk about it could get really uncomfortable really fast because I realize that I spend money frivolously at times because I just, I, I get into wanting all the things and I don't want or need all of the things. So 2020, I think is going to be the year of less things and more abundance. And by abundance, what I mean is really making room for the things that I, that I do need and want, like actually need and want, not all the other little side stuff that just comes in because it piques my interest, ooh, shiny object. So that, that's what I'm talking about. And opening up for more abundance, if you're constantly spending from a place of lack, I do I do believe that you are cutting yourself off from the opportunities of wealth. If you're treating money like it's something that's really hard to get, it gets harder to get because you get stuck in a mindset of, well, if I have it, I have to spend it, and then it's gone, and then it's not in savings, and I'm not really using it on the things I want, but then there's, but I need more money, I need more money. That kind of... Uh, crazy thinking kind of self-fulfilling prophecy if you feel like you don't have enough you're never going to have enough and I, I look around my life and I, I do have enough I have more than enough I my basic needs are met my family's basic needs are met and we have so much extra like the way I the way I grew up like and I think this is a part of of the problem is I go back to a place of lack where, you know, needs were met, but there wasn't there what there wasn't extra. And yes, my my mom and and my my dad and my family worked really hard to make sure that we could have the extra the extra fun stuff when we could, or or the big stuff when we could. And I did have opportunities that others might not have had, but I only had those because other sacrifices were made. And I don't live my life that way. I I. I worked very hard to get to where I am, but a lot of how I handle wealth comes from a place of, I don't know how to handle it. So I kind of get caught in these cycles of, of destruction and I'm trying to stop that. And I've talked about that more at the beginning of the year. And I think I was still stuck in a place and in a mindset where I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to make that switch and I, I'm ready now. You know, I look at like what we got got our daughter for Christmas and I'm I'm so pleased with it. And while it's more a big ticket item, she's going to get big ticket thing and, and not a bunch of little stuff, but she's going to get something that she's going to get use out of and love and play for a long time. So that that is the kind of thing we're going for. You know, I think about like my laptop. Well, if I think about, if I think about how long I've needed possibly a new laptop and the issues I have and like the backspace button is starting to maybe not work so well. 
and other things. Well, if I had been setting the money aside for that instead of spending on other unnecessary stuff, would I be halfway to getting what I want? Would I be almost all the way to getting what I want? Yes. Would it have meant that I had less, less little things, less frills, less bells and whistles, if you will? Yes. Which would have made me happier? Would, it, would I be happier if I, had, if I had the MacBook Pro I wanted? Would I be happier? Do I really wanna answer that question? I'm gonna answer that question. Yes, I would, because it is what I really want. And when I stare at my wish list, I stare at the MacBook Pro, it is literally the first thing on my wish list, and I know what it would cost me. And it feels like a lot of money, because it is. But when you're nickeling and diming yourself to death, the dollars, it's like not seeing the forest for the trees, right? You don't see the nickels and dimes for the dollars that they add up to being. And that's that thought, we're dropping stuff again. You know, and then I look at like a frivolous thing that I do want that I could I could just order and have sent to me is, is the Becca Flower Child Blush and I haven't done it. I want it, but I want to use other things up first so then I can make room for it in my collection to use and love instead of just sit and languish. All right. Just looking to see if there's anything here on the wish list that I crossed off. Like my fountain pens. I, I have two fountain pens and I love them. Levenger has refills in co cobalt and cocoa that I would love and I, and I would use. I don't use the fountain pens. Why am I gonna spend the money on getting refills for something that I barely y use? I would love to use them more, but I just, I have pens that I love and I wanna use those pens. The Elgato capture card, damn, I, I want that. But I don't even know what I would use it for. Like, I like the idea of, you know, hooking it up to, to my phone and, you know, putting on the monitor and using the monitor as the monitor and turning my phone around so I could treat it more like a camera that I could actually stare at the camera instead of getting distracted and staring at the screen. But is that is that really money well spent? And then I thought, well, you know, I could stream gaming or do something like that. And I'm like, you only like playing like three games. One, really, and you're still waiting for Breath of the Wild 2 to come out. And like, are you, like is, that really, is that really a benefit or is that something that just makes me feel good? Wow, making ourselves feel good is great. In the long run, if it was something that just sat or that I barely used, I'd feel really guilty about it and then it would turn into a regret purchase. So I think that is going to sit for quite a while. I do want custom bottom tabs from Caffeine and Paper Co. I just don't know what they would say. So I am waiting for Genius to strike and then I will probably get custom bottom tabs. Now those are, again, big ticket versus smaller ticket. They're important to me, but instead of setting the money aside for that and not spending it on other things, I'm spending it, you know, 10 times over on other things and then being like, I'm not gonna get that. Good. That's what we're talking about in 2021. Getting our heads screwed on right. All right, I'm gonna leave it on that. <laughs> Got another video. You're gonna see this makeup look again because I am not changing makeup looks to do different videos. I know, I few YouTubers that I love who like do a full face of makeup, do a video, take it off, do another with like different makeup or different clothes. I love y'all, I love y'all, but I just, I am afraid that I'm going to start to burn out really quickly. I'm gonna film another get ready with me tomorrow. So that you will also see before you see this, this video in the lineup and yeah, we're, we're gonna play with some more stuff. So more's coming, more, as my daughter would say, more's coming, she'd do really cute, she'd do really cute, more's coming. So I will catch you in the next one.